Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is cold outside tonight. Did you guys hear the wind? Oh my God, it is so blustery out here and the wind is blowing so much. It's actually, I'm a little guarded up here on the front porch. It is like really wind. Do you guys hear that? It is really, really windy out. But I'm a little guarded from it up here. Um, I was actually gonna film the vlog in the bedroom with little Boo Radley. He was up there, up there sleeping. Um, but I thought, I'm not really sure what time Alex is going to get home. And if he comes home and he's upstairs in the bedroom and I haven't finished the vlog yet, I think I'm going to try to finish it around the time that he gets home. Um, but if he comes home earlier than I think he's going to come home. Well, I just looked at the clock. It's like 546, or it was when I came out here. And I asked him what time he was going to get done with work today. And he said 6, which is a little bit later than he usually does. So he should be home quarter after 6, 6.30, something like that. Um, if he gets off earlier or later, depending. But anyway, I'll probably finish the vlog around the time that he comes home. But if he gets home earlier, then when I'm done vlogging, I didn't want to have to like stop if I was in the bedroom or whatever. So I was like, I think I'm going to film outside. Even though it's cold today, um, the fresh air is really, really nice. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's been snowing today. It's been raining today. It's been misting today. It's been windy today. It is uh, springtime in Indiana, and I just made myself a cup of coffee in my Turvis cup. I actually got online last night, and um, well, I looked up K-Pods, because here's the deal. So I found another box of Christmas coffee that I didn't realize I had. So I have, I had 10 K-Pods. Now after this, I have nine K-Pods of Christmas coffee left. And then I'm done with the Christmas coffee. I don't have any more Christmas coffee in the house. Do I have that white Barney's or am I done with that? No, I think I'm done with that. I think I'm done with all the Christmas coffee. Um, what were we watching the other night? I made a cup of coffee. I made the cotton candy coffee. Um, I was like, oh, I really feel like having coffee. What were we watching the other night? Oh, we were watching RuPaul, and I thought cotton candy coffee <laughs> went a little bit more with RuPaul than Christmas coffee. So anyway, after this, I'm done. So I um, last night, I got on Amazon. I was actually looking for some new Turvis coffee cups. Um, I think going forward, I have like enough clay coffee cups. I have so many coffee cups at this point that I don't even use half the ones that I have. And like the Halloween and the Christmas ones, I keep stored up in a different uh, cabinet to bring down because they won't all fit, you know? And I think going forward, like any plastic cups I buy, because the only ones I really use, the plastic like glasses in the house, are the Turvis ones, like the double insulated Turvis cups. I love those so much. And so, um, I think going forward, I'm only going to buy those plastic cups. <laughs> now watch, next month I'll buy something completely. I mean, maybe I'll change my mind, you know? I think I just started snowing again. I think I just saw, it's snowing a little bit. Oh my God, I can't believe this. But anyway, um, and then going forward, coffee cups, I'm just going to buy the um, these Turvis ones because they keep your coffee inside or out. They keep it warm for a long, long time. And the Turvis cups keep, keep like ice forever. Like you can, not forever, but like, you can have ice in a, in a glass and it'll stay, like the ice will stay intact for like two to three hours. It's fantastic. So those are really, Alex uses the other plastic cups, so I'm not going to get rid of them. But if I buy any more in the future, I'm only going to buy Turvis cups. Last night I bought one of these, but it looks like clear like this. It doesn't have any, I was actually looking to see if they had any like spring ones, which they do. They have ones, I am keep on looking over here because my neighbors are across the street and they have like um, workmen that are like, they're redoing their kitchen. And so he parked in our driveway earlier and he was like, do you care if I park in your, I was like, you can park in our driveway all day, every day. We don't care. He's like, you don't care. I said in front of our house and the driveway, he's like, you sure you don't care? I go, Alex is gone all day long. I'm not driving. No. He's like, well, I know Caroline's coming and I, cause they know Caroline. And I was like, Caroline can pull up in front of the mailbox. Don't even worry about it. Just park in our driveway. Well, he felt so bad about it. I was like, don't just use our driveway. Nobody else is using it all day long. So anyway, and I told him to do that. Well, he keeps on like going over there to his driveway because he's like worried about Alex coming home. Alex will park on the street. He doesn't care. <laughs> so anyway, but they've had these work people over there all day long. So I feel bad because I'm like, just park in our driveway. So he did for a little bit, but I didn't think he was like worried and he moved his car. Oh my God, this girl just rode down the street in her bike and she has shorts on. It is way too cold to be having shorts on. So last night I... Um, bought a, one of these Turvis ones. So I, like I was saying, I was looking to see if they had any like spring and summer ones, which they do. They have ones that have like flower blossoms and stuff. But in all honesty, even like this one I love that has like the, the pine trees and the snow and stuff in it. 
I like these, and if you can, I don't know if you can see this, but it's almost kind of like one of those, like, you can't really see it, but it's like one of those badges you, like, put on your, like, jean jacket or something. You can see it from the outside, and it's like, that's what it is. It's like a sewn badge. Is that not cool? But anyway, they had a couple different ones on there, but I like the, the ones that are just clear that don't really have anything on it. So I got one that's like, it's faded dark gray, the color on the outside. I really liked it. So I got that one last night. But what I was going to say is I don't think I'm going to buy as far as coffee cups unless they're like collector's ones. If, I, if they're not collector's ones, like anything that's like a collector's item, then I'm only going to buy the Termis ones. And by collector's items, I mean anything that like I would collect because... A couple months ago, I bought the cup and saucer that they had on the Reese's. Do you guys remember I did that on my Peter Nestef channel? If you watch it, I showed it. There are these two cups and saucers that I bought. One's like cloud print. They look like you made them like in um, ceramics class or something. They're really cute. They look like handmade. And I thought they were like $38. They were $25 last night when I was looking on Amazon. They have a bunch of them. But the brand has all different kinds of mugs that are real colorful and fun. Well, I've only used that coffee cup and saucer one time, like one of them one time, maybe each of them once, I don't know. But I was like, this summer, when I'm doing my meditations and stuff, I think I'm just gonna make like a pot of coffee and then I'm gonna put it in like a little craft and bring it out here with my cup and saucer and then I can sit out here with my cup and saucer uh, in the mornings, like, you know, and use the cup and saucers. So yesterday I bought the Turbis one, but then I also bought another cup and saucer. There was one that looked like it was on a pillow. It was like a cup on a pillow. It looked really cute, but that was, they didn't have that one. And then I bought one, my friend Nikki bought one too. She bought one that has like these like uh, round things on it. She got it for her birthday. Um, I think her mom got it for her for her birthday. And then I bought one that's just like a yellow mug and it has, it's called like a cloud handle on it. It's got this huge handle on it. I thought it'd be really cool to drink coffee in the summer. So, but other than like collectibles like that, like I'm not gonna just buy like, oh, and then I bought, <laughs> I say that, right? And then I bought four of these kind of like white clay look I, I was only gonna buy one but they came in a pack of four so i thought i'll just give the other ones away as gifts like in back because i like to do the baskets you know make gifts for people so i'll keep one of them or two of them and then i'll give the other two or three away but they're and they were not too expensive they were like twenty dollars for four and they're really nice they're like big mugs and they're like white clay and they're like they look like handmade but they're not so i thought like a white mug for summer would be nice too but other than that kind of stuff like the Turbis are where it's at, right here, I'm telling you. They keep your coffee warm forever. I think this is like chestnut or something. <laughs> I'm kind of over the, uh, the the Christmas coffee. I actually am kind of excited to start my new audiobook because I haven't started one since we've been back. The last audiobook that I read was Amy Tintera's Look for the Lie, which is the book for Peter's Book Club for April. And I started it in the airport and I finished it on the plane. And so I did a book YouTube video yesterday like asking you guys or the people that watch my booktube channel I said you get to pick my book and I narrowed it down to two books and so I said the first person that comments well the first person that commented didn't comment about the books so they like the first two or three comments don't have anything to do with like the books that I was talking about they were nice comments but they were like have you read this I recommend that so anyway then there were like three comments in the row that said that I should read Murder Road by Simone St. James so I'm gonna start that tonight and I'm really excited about that um Right now I'm filming my vlog. I'm uploading my drama video. Um, I'm uploading my Peter Does Stuff video. I'm uploading my Peterisms video. And I, honest to God, I didn't think that and so when I'm done with all that, I'm just going to relax. This has not been good. The vacation and coming back, I weighed myself when I came back and then I was like, um, I don't think I'm going to weigh myself until my weigh day. I'm just going to start on Thursday, tomorrow. I'm going to start the healthcare journey, the weight loss journey again, because this has not been, I've been ordering food every night. It has just not been good. So I've had a lot of fun, but it hasn't been good. So anyway, um, so tonight, I am going to uh, pick a show to watch, and then I am going to order some food. I think Alex and I will probably watch Vanderpump Rules tonight, and he's, I don't think he's watching The Valley anymore, but we'll probably get caught up on Vanderpump Rules because it was on last night. And then i got to watch pick another show. I think I might pick a Harlan Coben show. Oh, so what I was going to say was, after these videos are done and they're up, like... Um, I am just gonna like pick some show and just like get in cozy clothes and just for the night. Alex is like so deep into Shameless. He loves that show so much. So anyway, I'm wanting some like mystery thriller. So last night, um, we ate dinner. What did we watch last night? 
together? Or do we not? Last night we didn't watch anything together. Or did we? Last night was Tuesday night. What was on Monday? I don't remember, but anyway. Um, oh no, he had a meeting. So he had a, like a Zoom meeting. So it was like snowing, raining outside right now. It's like, it's big clumps. So he was like in the bedroom. So I was downstairs. I ate dinner. I ate dinner. And um, it's been like Cheesecake Central, left and right. I got last night, I got... I didn't even eat all of it, which it's whatever, but I got the factory nachos again with no meat on them. I love those. And then these macaroni and cheese, like, balls that they have. And I cut them in half, and they have this creamy marinara sauce in it. I mean, this has nothing to do with how... I was just like... I came back from Florida, and I was just like, okay, I'm going to have to start this whole deal over on Thursday because this has not been good. Um, I've been real active. I've, like, kept up my steps and stuff. Like, today I was, like, out with Caroline and whatever, so I was looking at my steps. My steps are not bad. Um... And it's really, really cold. But, like, as soon as, like, like today and tomorrow it's supposed to be cold. But then, like, Friday it's supposed to get warmer. And starting, like, Friday, it's like I'm, I'm walking again listening to my audiobook. So, tomorrow, getting back on the, the health loss or health code journey. I am going to do a, the weight loss journey and the health journey. I am going to do a video tomorrow and, you know, share what my weight is. <laughs> and I'm not excited about it. I feel like, I don't know if it's the tan or if it's where I'm sitting or if it's the... What I, the settings that I have, I don't think it's the settings that I have on my, oh, maybe it is. Hold on a second. Okay, I reset the, the settings on my camera, and then it stopped. So, I don't know. Is the lighting better now? I was like, so I don't know if it'll be on there or not, because I can't really, couldn't tell. Oh, it must have stopped, because the recording thing at the top. There's like a red button right there, and then the recording thing was at the top. But I, like, changed it. I, like, turned it. I guess you can't turn it while you're recording or it stops it. But anyway, I didn't have it on the regular setting that I usually do. It must have, like, when I was had it in my bag on the way back, my backpack. Um, oh, that was why I got on Amazon last night. I'll tell you that in a second. So, while I had, I was switching the setting. It must have switched in the bag. Like, it just, like, the thing must have turned. But anyway, I felt like the lighting was really bad on my camera for the last two days. Is this any better? Do you guys feel like it's, you guys are like, Peter, we don't even watch the vlog. We just listen to it. <laughs> But speaking, I know I'm all over the place, but speaking of Amazon, I was getting online because the bag, the backpack that I have, I've had it literally for 15 or 20 years, probably 20 years. It's the North Face Isabella backpack, and it's the one that has a small pocket in front, and I absolutely love this backpack. It has like a pocket, like it has three pockets inside. It's fantastic. It has like two zippered parts. I love this bag so much. Well, I wanted to get the exact same bag. Sawing some wood. I wanted to get the exact same backpack. I don't think he, he hasn't been doing that very much today. So I don't think I have to stop because I think he's just going to do it for a moment or two. But anyway, so I got on Amazon to look and see if they had the backpack. Well, they do have an Isabella North Face, but they don't have the original one that I have. The one that I have, I found because this is so silly. You were talking about influencers way back before YouTube and all that. This is way back before YouTube even existed. There was a picture of Matthew McConaughey on the beach, and he had this backpack on. And I was like, oh my god, I want that backpack. That was the reason I bought that backpack years ago. Well, this backpack has lasted me 20 years. Every trip I've ever taken, I've taken this backpack on. I love it. Well, I noticed... So, this bracelet that Alex got me for Christmas, I could not find it when um, we were packing to leave. It's a silver bracelet. It's beautiful. And I love it. And I was like, I couldn't find it anywhere. And so Alex was like, are you sure it's not in your backpack? So I was like going through everything. I couldn't find it in my backpack. I was like, where is it? Well, it was at the very bottom of the backpack. I'm so happy I did not lose it. I did not realize that the very bottom of the backpack in this corner, it was fraying. It looks like it's going to like explode and like come open. And it was like the bracelet was like hiding underneath there. I don't even know how I found it, if you want to know the truth. I was so thankful. So, I did use this backpack on this trip because I have donated and given away, like, every backpack that we have in the house. I think I only have, like, the small backpacks that I take to the beach. I don't have, like, a big backpack except for, like, one, and it's this Patagonia one that I don't like that goes with this bag. So... I was like, I got to get another backpack because I don't really have one to, like, take on trips and stuff like that that can carry my laptop and whatever, right? So, 
I got a North Face and they don't have the original one like for sale. eBay, they have like one. I have the white one. They have it in several different colors. It's actually a woman's backpack, which I mean, I don't really care. But they have it in like pink and purple and blue and white. But I love the white. Um, so what's so funny about this is I don't know if you'll remember this, but I did this, I think it was on my Peter Does Stuff channel. I did this unboxing. This company sent me, or somebody gifted it to me. I think somebody gifted it to me. They sent me this coffee that was from this Grounds and Hounds coffee company. I loved everything about that. The coffee mug is so cute. I use it all the time and stuff. And yeah, it was a gift somebody sent me. And um, so like all their, a lot of their proceeds go to like rescue dogs and like getting shots and things for that. I did a whole video about it on my Peter Does Stuff channel, I think. Well, in it, it came in like this like burlap bag. So at the last minute, I had like no bags like in our closet. So I rolled this burlap bag up because I was like, if my backpack completely explodes in the middle of the airport, I gotta have something to put all this stuff in it. You know, my camera, my iPad, everything. So I brought this burlap bag to Miami. I carried it everywhere. So put it back in the closet. I was like, this burlap bag is fantastic. Never had to use it, thank God, because my bag didn't rip open. But it's fraying even more now because I put, load so much stuff into it. So I got on Amazon last night. They do not have the bag that I have on Amazon. They have newer versions of it, but they don't, North Face doesn't have that bag anymore. I looked on the North Face website too. They don't have it. But on eBay, they do have pre-used ones. So I'm thinking about, and they're not really that expensive. I was kind of surprised. They're like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. And this backpack has lasted me 20 years. It's a fantastic backpack. I'm thinking about, um, Maybe buying one of the pre-used ones. I'm thinking of like getting a different color, not getting white. But I love the white one so much because it just, you know, it goes with everything. But, and you would think it gets really dirty because it's white. I've had white cars in my life and I've had black cars in my life. Black cars get a lot dirtier than white cars in, in all truth. Isn't that crazy? So, you know, like, what's so funny is when we were at Ultra, there was this one guy there who was probably like 25. He and his girlfriend, they were so dressed up. And he had white linen pants on the day after. It was muddy and rainy and stuff like that. And I looked at Alex and I was like, uh, that was a choice to wear white linen baggy pants, okay, with like dress shoes to a, a music festival. And at the end of the night, like he was walking in front of us out of the VIP section and he, and I saw him, he was dancing next to us the whole night, so like that. Literally there was like two spots of mud in the very bottom and that was it. I was like, how did he keep these white linen pants clean the whole time at this festival? I don't know how he did it, but he must have sprayed those things with something, but so anyway, that's how I originally got on Amazon. Then I started looking for this. And I did buy some K-Pods, but I bought like just one box of K-Pods because I was like, I have enough. So then I laid down and I took a nap. I took a fantastic nap last night. I'm taking these great naps, but I'm having a hard time falling asleep at night, even when I'm like super, super tired since I got home, which is so weird because on our trip, I, I took naps and I fell asleep just hours later and slept fantastically and fell asleep right away. I do think it has a lot to do with the fact that our room there was like pitch black and here it's not. I think that has a huge part to do with it. And also Boo Radley gets up and down throughout the night. But the last two nights he hasn't been, you know, um, up and down that much at all. So um, I took a nap. Alex is watching Shameless. I got up from my nap. And then I... Um, started watching Apple's Never Fall. And my plan was, because I wanted, to, I was like, if you're gonna film videos, because Caroline was picking me up today at 2.30. So I was like, I knew we'd be gone from like 2.30 to 4.30 or 2.30 to 5.30. And I was like, if you're gonna film videos, you're gonna have to do it before you leave. Like there's no way you're gonna be able to do it afterwards. Because you're just not gonna have enough time and you're probably gonna be tired from like running around all day and whatever. So, I was like, I want to go to bed somewhat early. So my plan was, I think I had watched the first episode. I think I'd only watched the first episode and part of the second episode of Apple's Never Fall. So Apple's Never Fall is a TV adaptation of the Leanne Moyarity novel. I read it like two years ago, listened to it on Audible. She's the writer that did Big Little Lies, Nine Perfect Strangers. I love her writing. I love it so much. I wanted to read The Husband's Secret forever. I actually, that should be the next book that I start on Audible because I wanted to listen to it forever. But anyway, so maybe I will do that and then do Murder Road. We'll see. So anyway, or maybe I'll do Murder Road and then do that. I don't know. But anyway, I'm kind of in a Liam O'Yarity kind of mood. I have like Truly Madly Guilty. Verbs. I mean, there's like four of her books that I've never read that I've wanted to read forever. So anyway, my plan was to watch like two episodes, two and a half episodes, and then finish it tonight. Well, 
I really, the first episode, like, I liked it, but I wasn't really that into it. And the thing that was weird about it was I kind of remembered, like, I remembered, like, throughout the whole show or the book, you think something's happened, and then it's completely different at the end. I knew that. Like, I knew that piece of it, but I didn't remember what it was. I didn't remember, like, what had happened that was different or whatever, right? Um... And it goes back and forth, and, like, each episode is, like, one of the kids, the husband's story, the wife's story. So, anyway, I really did, to be honest with you, I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. A lot of people have asked me, like, what, like, on here, like, in comments and stuff, like, what my review was. It. I thought it was straight up a 10 out of 10. I thought it was fantastic. I loved it. I thought it was so well done. Um, you know, Annette Benning is really, I mean, she's in it, but she's not, like, a huge part of it. Um... Sam Neill that plays the husband is fantastic. The people that are the kids. The guy that plays the one son, I thought he was on White Lotus 2. He's actually on White Lotus 1. He plays the guy whose mom passes away in White Lotus or whatever. He's like the real mean husband. The kid, the people that play the kids are fantastic. It's really, really good. Um, I mean, they're kids. They're grown up. They're like 30. I was so into it. I watched the whole show last night. I just, I could not, I like lit candles and I was so cozy in my little chair in there. And it was like raining outside and it was like lightning and stuff. I was so into the show. I watched the whole thing, finished it at about 5.15, 5, 10 after 5, 5.10, 5.15, something like that. I was like, I know I stayed up late, but it was totally worth it. Got up today about 12.30. Got Boo, took Boo Radley out, got him settled. And then I was like, I want to at least film a drama video today. Oh, so this was the other thing. So... I have a couple of drama videos that I'm working on, but like I have to read some articles before. They're not like influencer topics. And so I got a couple of DMs last night. People were asking me why I wasn't covering this Todra Call talking about Colleen Ballinger thing. So I was like, okay. And I knew that Adam McIntyre had done a video about it, but I hadn't watched it yet because I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna make the video or not. I hadn't really decided yet. I didn't really think anybody on my channel would be that interested in it. That's why I wasn't going to make it. But I don't like to watch other people's drama videos until after I'm done because I don't want it to like kind of sway my opinion or whatever. Well, last night I got this DM and somebody was like, I would really like to hear what you had to say about it. And it was somebody that I respect. So like, you know, that has watched my channels for a long time. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do this. So I started like, I, I already had all the receipts because people had sent them to me and I had saved them and stuff. And so I started outlining this video. And so then today I was like, well, that will be the video that I'll do. So I filmed that video. Well, halfway through it, Caroline was supposed to be here at two thirty. She's usually like five or ten minutes late. So I thought I have enough, more than enough time. Well, she texted me halfway through. It. She's like, "I'll be there at two fifteen instead of two thirty. So I'm like, "Okay, I need a few minutes to finish this video." So she's like, "Okay, I'll drive around and do whatever." So then she got here and she's like, "Take your time." I like looked. I was like, "Is she here?" I was. I think she texted me again. She was like, "Take your time." She was like, "I'm just out in the car work." She was doing work and stuff in the car anyway. So I was like, "Okay." And so I finished it, the video, got that done. Then we went. On Aaron's, when I came back from Aaron's, um, I filmed a haul video in the kitchen of like my stuff I bought today. And then I bought, or then I did a Peterisms video upstairs, and now I'm vlogging. I honest to God, I really wanted to film like seven videos. I wanted to film like seven videos every day. But I was like, okay, realistically, I'm probably only going to get a vlog done today. Because I thought, I'll get up, I'll be, like, you know, cleaning stuff up in the house. I'll be taking Boo Radley out and playing with him and stuff. And then I'll go with Caroline. And so I won't have time to film videos. And so I'll just get a, I'll probably just film a vlog when I get home. I honestly thought I'd get home at, like, 4.45, 5.30, something like that. I ended up getting home at, like, 4, which was kind of surprising. So... We went to the post office. We were like quick everywhere we went. Went to the post office. I had a, like three packages at the post office. And then we went to Costco. Caroline had to get some things at Costco. I ended up getting Kleenex and I got these. Um, well, I showed them on my Peter Dustoff channel, but these uh, donuts to take to the, if I go down to the. So the thing that they're having on Monday, I didn't realize, I'm making a video about this on my Peter Dustoff channel, but I didn't realize that this solar eclipse thing was such a huge deal. Apparently, like, Indiana has put out all these warnings. It's, like, crazy. Like, there's apparently all these, like, you can't get a hotel room in Indiana this weekend to save your life. Like, all these people are coming into town for it on Monday and stuff like that, which is just unbelievable to me. But anyway, at the pool, they're having thing, something in our neighborhood for it. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to go to that or not. Um, we'll see. 
I think it'd be kind of fun to go to it. So, but you're supposed to like bring a food or something like that. So I got these donut things that I had a while ago and I love. They're, I can have maybe one of them on my weight loss journey because by then I'll be back on it, you know? So anyway, I got those if I, if I end up going down there on Monday. And then we went to Costco. I got Kleenex as well. I showed everything I got on my haul video. And then after that, we went to Trader Joe's. I kind of wanted to get one of those small canvas bags. Have you guys seen those that have gone like viral online? They're real small and they're cute. They look like little purses. And they went viral. Like they're comparing them to those hot pink Stanley Cup. So I was like, okay, well, let's just go. The chance that maybe they're not sold out in Indiana might be good. So we went, well, they were sold out of them completely. But I went around to Trader Joe's. I looked at all the new stuff. I didn't really get a whole bunch of stuff there. Got Boo Radley some of his treats. And then after I did my haul and showed the treats in my haul, I, looked, I put him in the closet. I have bought this dog so many different kinds of food and treats in the last six months because I keep on thinking we're running out. He's got like, I looked in there and the Trader Joe's, he had another bag in there. So now he has three. He probably has two more in there pushed in the back that I can't see. The whole bottom drawer and the floor of our pantry are all dog food and dog treats. This dog has got so many treats and dog food. It's unbelievable. So we went to Trader Joe's and then we went to Fresh Time. Um... Because I had to get like iced coffee and I wanted to get cottage cheese. They didn't have the they didn't have the flavor. I just wanted plain cottage cheese, but they only had they had that in big containers. But I didn't get that. Um, so we went to Trader uh, Fresh Time, and then we went home after that. So it was like I was home by like four o'clock, and so I filmed the haul. I love doing those hauls. I know that some people like or whatever, but I know some people are like I get a lot of comments or DMs from people. They're like, I love your grocery store hauls. They're so calming. I love a good. I love to watch a haul. I don't care if it's a grocery store haul. I don't care if it's a Saks Fifth Avenue haul. I don't care if it's a CVS haul. I love watching haul videos. I don't know why I love watching what other people bought, but I love it. So um, I did that. Came home, did that, then did all the videos and. I was gonna do a Peter Dusta vid or a, a booktube video today because I had put this thing out on Instagram last night about I hadn't done a Q and A on my booktube channel in a long time, and so asked me like bookish questions, which is so funny because I literally said this is for my booktube channel. Ask me bookish questions, and people in the comment sections are like, "What's the real reason why Jeffrey and Manny aren't friends?" I'm like, "That's not a bookish question." <laughs> But thank you for the question. I appreciate it. People are like, are you going to make a video about Todd? And I'm like, there, you could actually just DM me that. You don't have to leave it in the questions for the Q&A for the book questions. But some people ask me some good questions. Actually, people said some things about stuff that I wasn't even aware of. So that was kind of interesting. I was looking into some stuff. Um, but it hasn't been 24 hours yet. So I'm going to leave the question up there longer. And I'm going to um, do the... Uh, do the DM. Last night and today I was explaining to Alex about there's this Instagram account, this dog, Big Marvis Teeth. Do you guys was I talking about this yesterday? Oh my god. I have like followed everything about this dog for months and all of his medical issues. And his moms are so sweet. And they so yesterday I was like with bated breath watching to see like the update they took him to a neurologist and they had to go to the er last night and i haven't seen the update that she put yesterday up yet because I, she was so tired last night and so was marvis this little dog is so cute i was telling caroline that today and then she was telling me about some rescue pit bull whose dad is real rich and its name is she said she watches it on TikTok, but he's got Instagram, too, or she's got Instagram, too. Her name's Miss Peaches or something like that. Caroline's like, you should watch this one. And then a lot of people have asked me about the prairie dogs. A lot of people in the comments are asking me if I watch these prairie dogs. I don't remember what their names are because I don't have my phone with me. There are two names, and they start with a P. Potter and something prairie dogs. Well, I, I think it was Emily, actually, that watches um, my vlogs a lot. So, hey, Emily, how are you? I think she DM'd me, like, while I was on vacation. I was talking about Thumbelina the Squirrel, and she was like, do you watch, I think it's like Potter and Paxton or something like that. It's these two prairie dogs. They're so sweet, the rescue prairie dogs. And so she was like, do you watch these prairie dogs? Well, I, like, immediately went in and looked at their account, and I, like, followed them. So it was so funny because right after that, I started getting all these DMs and these comments and people were asking me, do you follow these prairie dogs? And I was like, oh my God, Emily literally just asked me about, I think it was Emily. I was like, she literally just asked me about this like a day ago and I just started following them. And now all these people are asking me about these prairie dogs. I thought it was so cute. 
So, yeah, I am following those prairie dogs. Now, I'm following, like, any rescue animal. I love to, the rescue, the squirrels, and uh, the squirrel boxes. I'm so into these squirrel boxes now where they put these cameras in the squirrel cages or squirrel boxes. And then it shows, like, the life of the squirrel. And they're, like, wrestling in there. And they're, like, sharing food. And they're all cuddling together, sleeping. I love that. It makes me so happy. So, yeah, today's been a good day. It's been a really good day. Even though it was cold today, I mean, it was like 30 degrees colder today than it was yesterday, it's kind of a good reminder of like, okay, we've left winter, spring is right around the corner, let's be grateful for it's the all the flowers, the trees are budding, you know, let's be grateful for all that, let's be grateful for the spring and the summer to come. Caroline and I were talking about the pool opening today, she, she was like, this is how Caroline was with me on the phone. <laughs> Caroline was like, okay, on the phone. This is how she was with me in the car today. She goes, okay, about the pool opening? And I was like, yeah. She goes, do you think it's going to open early? I go, well, that's apparently the question of the century because everybody on Q&A has been asking me if the pool's going to open early. She started laughing. She goes, well, our pool won't open early. Her pool won't. They have to open on May 31st because it's considered like a public pool, but ours is like... Hers is like a neighborhood pool. Ours is a neighborhood pool, but it's a private residency in here, so we can open it when we want to, supposedly. It's like half private, half public. I don't really know how it works. But anyway, they opened it early last year. She goes, none of this stuff about, we, you don't feel like going to the pool. I go, when did I ever say that last year, Caroline? She goes, none of this. And she started laughing. She tries to get all bossy with me. She was like, none of this about, we're not doing the pool. I said, Hey, I already have my summer plan ready. I'm getting up in the morning, and I'm making videos in the morning. I'm going to make videos late at night, and I said I'm going to go to the pool all day long and film a vlog. If I miss a drama video here and there, oh, so be it. I'm enjoying my summer. I said, listen, I got my... She goes, that sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> so while I was in Florida, I don't know how much of this story I've shared, but I think I've shared parts of it on, like, Caroline never can remember anything. So while I was in Florida, I wish I had my phone with me. I showed you the picture. The So, I found out after my mom passed away. My mom had told me that after college, like summers after college, she went to Hyannisport, Massachusetts, and she worked in this hospital. And she had this guy that was gay that she used to work with. And she said, when I'm gone someday, you'll find his letters that he used to write me. And he would say things. I don't even know why she went to these lengths. I really don't. She said, he said things to me like, don't you just love Judy Garland and things like that, right? Okay. So my mom passes away and I'm looking for these letters in the basement. And I've already now, I know that my grandma's gone to prison and all this kind of stuff, right? And I find these letters and they're from this guy, his name, she told me his name and everything, but they're not, he's not gay. They were romantic letters between my mom and him, like after they come back. So I think I've shared parts of this on here because finally I was like so obsessed with finding out the story that one day we were driving around and Tanya like put her hand on my leg and she goes, babe, you got to just let this go. Like some things you're just not going to know everything about, right? And so do you, I, some of you have watched my vlog for a long time will remember me talking about this, but anyway, Long story short, I found this guy through, I think it was like one of his parents' obituary. I he had like, his last name is real bizarre. And I found his last name, but he didn't have any social media, but his sister did. So I messaged her. She gave the message to him and he emailed me. And so we started this email correspondence and he said to me, I said, how did you know my mom, blah, 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 whatever. And basically he said, I knew your mom because she was with your aunt and well he said like dark haired girl but then my aunt confirmed that it was her in Florida and your mom was staying down there for like the whole summer it was the summer of 62 which was when my mom said she was in Hyannis Port which would have been the summer after her freshman year in college which was when my grandma was in prison I found out later and he was like your mom was down there for the whole summer she stayed at this hotel blah blah, blah which I found out later was the Delano Hotel and on and on and on so we're walking down there. Well, they're redoing like four hotels in a row. They're turning them into residences and the Delano is one of them. So I took a picture of it and I sent it to Caroline and I said, this was the, the hotel where our mom stayed for that entire summer. And Caroline didn't really say anything about it. I don't know why, but for some reason on this trip, like it really got me in a way that it really had never has before when I've seen it. I was like, you know, thank God that our moms got to have one like, I mean, Yes, on the expense of a stolen dollar, I don't condemn that. But that they got to have one kind of carefree, because my aunt was never that person. She was never like, just wing it, carefree, whatever, right? 
So Caroline and I are having this conversation in the car. She's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't remember this. She's like, I know that you said something about them going to Florida and you found out from my mom. And she's like, but that just doesn't seem like my mom and whatever. I don't, and I, she goes, are you sure? I go, Caroline, your mother told me this. She's like, now what? And she's like, and, and she's like, I just like, this doesn't seem right to me. And you, and how did you find this email and blah, 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 whatever. And she's like questioning me on this. And I'm like, we, your mom and I were at Sullivan's restaurant, not Sullivan's hardware, Sullivan's restaurant, the straight. I was having a cheeseburger. It was before I was a vegetarian. I asked your mom all about this. And I even said to her, how did you guys afford it to stay at the Delano in Florida or whatever it was called at that time for a whole summer? And she was like, I don't know, probably on grandma's stolen money, Peter. That's why Caroline and I, or your mom and I never wanted you and Caroline to know because you would think badly of your gram of grandma and of us. And you know, there, we needed to get out of town. It leaves so many questions unanswered of why they had to be out of town for three months. Like, what were they in danger? Like, was there more to the story? Was my grandma in prison as a cover up? Like, was she covering? I mean, a lot of people have speculated that maybe it was like a mob thing. I don't know. Like, I really, to this day, I don't know anything about it. We've tried to find out so much stuff, and it's like there's just dead end after dead end after dead end, right? So, Caroline's like, question. She's like, I. You got, where? when did you get this email? I don't even believe this, believe, believe this email. So I get on my phone, right? I pull up my email and I look up, like I start putting in keywords and it pulls this email up from 2011. And she goes, how do you even have that email? And I go, Caroline, and I read the email to her, to him, that he, he's like, oh yes, I remember your mother and blah, 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 and I had sent a picture and blah, blah, and he had seen this picture and he was like, yes, that's exactly how I remember your mother and I'll, I was really in love with her and she, you know, she said it would never work and he was from like Pennsylvania and whatever and all this kind of stuff. And Caroline's like, that's just so bizarre to me that you went to those lengths and then what did my mom say? I'm like, Caroline, I have told you this story 50 times. She's like, I just, that doesn't seem like my mom. I was like, well, your mom said it. She said the hotel that she stayed in. She, she said to me, like, the re that they, the, they afforded it on grandma's money that she stole. Like, I mean, all this is true. It's factual. She's like, it just seems so, but Caroline's like, it just seems so bizarre to me. I go, can we just focus on the fact that our mothers were in Miami, Florida for three months in 1962 and stay at the hotel where like the Beatles played and John F. Kennedy stayed and, you know, uh, Elvis was at. I mean, this was the, the hottest hotel in Miami and our mothers were staying there for three months that summer before they went back to college and we never knew about it until my mother passed away. She goes, well, my mom never told me about it. I go, she never wanted you to think badly of grandma. Carol, I've told you a story a million times. I'm like reading her the email. I still have the email on my phone, in my phone, you know? She's like, I just think this whole thing is so bizarre. I said, well, I think we need to be going revisiting this documentary thing. Cause this documentary thing, could take us to the social service, foster care service, because now we know that our mothers weren't really fostered out to family members. Yes, they were some summers, but they were also in the foster care system. What really happened? Did my mother actually have a twin brother that my grandmother gave up for adoption, whose father was killed by the mafia? That is true. And that, you know, then he went and lived somewhere else. I've told that story. You know, what is this huge story, this huge family secret? I'm like, Carol, I think we need to start digging into this again. She's like, I don't know. I'm like, Carol, we could do a whole podcast about this. She's like, oh, a podcast. Now that might be kind of fun. What would we talk about on the podcast? I'm like, a girl, we just sat here and talked about it for half an hour. We talked about finding grandma's story. <laughs> It'd be like Finding Nemo, but it'd be Finding Grandma. She's like, do you think anybody would care? I go, Caroline, it could be like a mob cover-up. I mean, do you even understand the implications of all that? I'm like so intrigued by all this stuff. Every time I look into it. But anyway, I took a picture of this hotel, the Delano, because now they're redoing it in Miami and stuff like that. It's right very close to Lincoln Road where we eat. And I'm showing it to Caroline Seven. So, she's like, yeah, it is kind of cool to think that our mom, she's like, my mom just never lived that life. My mom was so regimented and whatever. And she's like, it does make me happy. I said, doesn't it just make you happy that our moms had one summer that like was like, our moms grew up so poor and so constantly worried about stuff just to have, and, and I'm not condoning obviously the mon money in any certain way, but I mean, that was my dad's fear of ever telling me. He was like, they were always so worried that you would look, you know, down on grandma. I was like, you know, whatever. But like the story is so intriguing to me, you know? I, there's so much that I want to know. <laughs> but I have to be honest, by now, having gone through the basement and stuff, 
I have what I have the details that I'm gonna have. Like I'm gonna have to dig into it further if I'm gonna want to find out anything. And I kind of do, but Caroline's kind of like she doesn't seem that interested in it anymore. So I need a partner in crime to go find this stuff out that's just as interested in it as I am. <laughs> Cause I can tell you right now, Caroline, she's not it. You know. In fact, years ago. I got this email from somebody and she's like, I'm not a stalker. She's like, I just go into gene genealogy and stuff like that. And she was like, something about, she found all this stuff about my grandma. And she was like, I think she found the wrong person in all honesty. I think she found the, because there's several people with my grandma's name. And I think like many people. And I think she, because she was like, go grandma. She's been married like four times. And I was like, now I know for a fact my grandma was married twice. Only twice. I know that for a fact. She was like, go grandma. She was married four times. And I was like... No, I know for a fact my grandma was only married twice. If she was married four times, then there are more secrets out there than I know. But I am almost pot. She was married to my grandfather, my mom's dad, who died when my mom was four and my aunt was six. And then she got remarried to my mom's stepfather. And then she was married to him into when she would have gone to prison. And then they got divorced after, I think, that or whatever. When I mean, they were married when Caroline and I were alive. So, oh, there's my neighbor coming up. Hey. They were married when um, Caroline and I were alive and then got divorced after that because my mom's stepdad was, like, violent one time towards my grandma. My mom and my aunt swooped in and was like, you're, you're gone. You're out. And that was the end. We never heard from him again. So those were the only two times. After that, my grandma lived in, like, this apartment and... Anyway, I don't know. She never was married again as far as I, not in my lifetime. So if those other two marriages would have had to come before my mom, which that never happened, um, or in between my mom's dad and her stepdad, which I know that didn't happen. So I think that person found the wrong person. Some of those genealogy reports, like you find wrong stuff all the time, you know? But anyway, I'm still intrigued with this, my own true crime mystery of my life. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. I probably never will. I have to say, like, years ago, like, I felt like it almost kind of defined me. Like, if I knew the truth, like, it would tell me more things about myself. This is going to stop in 20 seconds, so hold on. I haven't done that in a long time. I just usually let it run out. Um, but years ago when I was real intrigued with it, I felt like kind of like knowing the truth about it and the battery's at the halfway mark. So this must be my bad battery because I don't feel like I've been vlogging out here for no hour tonight. But... Back in the day when I was real interested in Caroline and I started looking into it, I felt like it kind of would like define me and it would explain a lot of things about my mom and whatever. But there's so many things at this point that I don't understand about my mom and I don't get. And I think, you know, my mom grew up, truth be told, I think she grew up in poverty with a lot of abuse and a lot of abuse that nobody knew about because I think she was in the foster care system. I think she also grew up in an era where women didn't talk about those things. Um, I think that my mom had horrific abuse because she was so terrified. She was terrified of men a lot. Um, I think she suffered horrific abuse that, and I think that my, my aunt didn't feel like she could protect my mom from that. And she felt horrible about that because that came out later with my, my aunt saying certain things. Um, but I think that my mom grew up in a generation where you didn't talk about that. You know, and when I was watching that murder on the Friday night lights and they were talking about those cheerleaders that were assaulted, like most of those cheerleaders were like, you didn't talk about it. Like, because then you were shamed and victimized. And I think my mom grew up in that generation, you know, where you didn't talk about those things. I mean, even when my mom talked about boys looking in her window and her stepfather having the shotgun and when the police came to question her they asked her questions like you know like do you wear tight clothes to entice the boys to school so if she had come out at that point and said this happened to me this happened to me i don't know that she even had the language she used to do that um i do know that later in life she was a huge advocate for girls that had gone through similar situations like that I just don't know that she knew how to share her own story. I think that she had so much shame and guilt associated with it. And I also think that indirectly she had, I think indirectly, like she blamed my grandmother a little bit for it. Um, there was always a lot of, like, they loved my grandmother, like, endlessly. But I think my grandmother did, like my dad said, she did the best that she could do. You know, she was a single mother for through much of their childhood and things like that. And I think she just didn't feel like she could protect them as much. You know, I think that's why my aunt always felt so bad because my grandma would call my mom's sister and she would say, you know, like my mom would tell me stories later that grandma would always say, you know, to my aunt Kathy, you have to protect sister at any expense, you know? And I think at that point they knew things that had happened. I don't know. Um, 
it makes me sad, you know? It makes me really sad. And um, it makes me sad that my mom never felt like she could talk about those things in her life and that she, there was so much, I don't think my mom ever, I don't think my mom and my aunt, because when I did ask my aunt questions, she was very forthright with telling me what she did remember and what she didn't know. Um, and there's a lot that I haven't shared, not about my grandma and her history, but like with my mom. Um, but I think that there, it wasn't that they didn't share it, like about my grandma and all that kind of stuff because of keeping it a secret. I think it was because of shame and embarrassment. You know, when I asked our neighbor that knew my mom and my aunt and was good friends with my mom and my aunt all the way through when they passed, but knew them in high school and junior high and stuff like that, I said something to her one day. She's the one that walks all the time. And I said something to her one day about like, did you know that my grandma had gone to prison? She goes, Peter, everybody knew. Because everybody in Indianapolis knew it wasn't a secret. So I think the huge amount, maybe that's why they got out of Indianapolis and went to Florida for the summer. I don't know. You know, maybe the embarrassment or the shame, you know, maybe my aunt, my grandma, like the, got, they got rid of the house that they were running at the time. So there was nowhere for them to come back after college. I don't know what that was about. You know, those are the pieces that I wish I did know. I think that makes me, what makes me saddest is that they weren't keeping secrets because of, um, just being secret keepers they were keeping secrets out of shame and embarrassment and i think guilt too you know which was something that my mom lived with for the whole lot their whole lot whole life and then my mom is you know an alcoholic in recovery and i think she had a predisposition and then i think my, my aunt had you know a lot of issues my mom had huge mental health issues my aunt not so much but you know and i think a lot of it was exasperated i don't think caused necessarily by that. I think she already had some of those things, but I think exasperated by those conditions. My mom was a very fearful woman. Very, very fearful. I mean, to the point where I remember my ex and I going out for my mom's 60th birthday to Chicago with my aunt and Caroline, and we stayed at the W, and my mom wouldn't even come down three floors in an elevator by herself because she was so afraid that she would be assaulted by a man in an elevator. She wouldn't even ride in an elevator by herself. She was terrified of it. Um, I mean, that's pretty deep-seated fear of abuse that's happened over a long period of life. And any time that I would ever ask my mom, she'd say, I probably was and I don't remember it. All I know is I have the reactionary response to it. Like I respond to very fearful situations, but I don't know where it comes from, you know? So I don't know. It makes me sad. I'm glad that my mom's not in pain anymore because I do think that it really scared the hell out of her a lot in life. She was very, very scared of men in authoritative positions or men that were domineering or men that like my dad and my uncle were very gentle with my mom always and I think that's why she trusted them but any man that was in kind of like an authority position or was condescending or patronizing to my mom you would see her like bulk up like she either she'd either go into the shell of a child or she'd become almost kind of like you're not going to speak to me that way like she it was one or the other um after she got sober she was able to kind of like I think she came into her own of not letting people have control over her anymore, but like, I don't think she was ever, I don't know what she talked about in therapy or whatever. I mean, maybe she talked about all those things, I, but they're not in her journals. Um, she hints at things in her journals. She hints at things. I haven't gone through all of her journals yet. They're really difficult to read in all honesty. Um, but that's for another story, another time. So anyway, I don't know, it just makes me sad, you know, that people suffer so silently. I'm sure so many of you out there share that same story. I mean, we all do at some point in our life, I think, suffer silently about what we're going through. And I think it's sad, you know, I think there's always somebody out there that shares a similar story that could help you, you know? And that's why I love to share so much of what I'm going through because I think there's probably somebody out there that might, as painful as it is sometimes for me to share, what I've gone through or what I'm going through in any situation that if one person out there can benefit from hearing that and being like, I'm not alone. Cause that's how I've learned in my life. Right? Like in, especially in 12 step meetings, you know, hearing somebody be like, Oh my God, that's my story. Like I'm not alone. Like I thought I was crazy. I'm not like, they think the same way as me. They've lived the same experience or similar experience. There's such power in that, you know, in, in turning our wounds into wisdom and sharing our stories with one another and helping somebody else. Um, I wish my mom had had that. I wish she had, you know? Um, so anyway, and maybe she did. Maybe she did with her sponsor or her therapist and things like that. Maybe she did share those things and she just chose not to share them with me. I hope so. I do know that after she got sober and she changed therapists, there was a calmness and a peace about my mom that came over her that I really think like an in inventory and then definitely in therapy because inventory doesn't solve all those issues. But I think she was in intensive therapy 
I really think she probably shared some things that I never knew about that she really worked through. And I'm, I'm hopeful for that. There was a peace and a calm that came over my mom that she had the last 12 to 13 years of her life sober that she never had before, you know? That drinking just wouldn't take away from her. I think we think sometimes drinking and drugs and self-medication take away the pain, but they don't, you know? Is this my husband coming out? No. But I'm gonna get, I am gonna get off here because I'm getting cold. And this talking about my mom stuff went in a whole different direction than I didn't think it was. But anyway, find somebody out there to talk to if you can. You know, um, anybody, share it, get it off your chest. It's the only way that I know how to work through things. Journal it. You know, um, I think it helps to reach out to somebody and talk to somebody and. And keep on and keep on searching until you find the right person too, you know? Anyway, um, all right, I'm gonna get off here real quick outro because I'm freezing tonight. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for hanging out on I can't wait to see their I can't wait to see their kitchen. She is so excited about it. I asked him today, I said, Are you real excited about your kitchen? He goes, I'm excited for her. He goes, She's the one that wants the new kitchen. I'm excited for her. I love that. Like, I love that, right? Like that's the epitome of, you know, a happy relationship, <laughs> you know, is when somebody's excited for their partner being excited about something. Anyway, it's like my husband, like, when he was, like, so excited to go see this, he's like, I can't wait to see this DJ, you know, this this Adam Bear guy. He's like, I love him so much. And I was like, we were walking over there. He was so excited. I'm like, I'm so excited to see my husband like that, you know? Anyway, all right, you guys, I'm going to get off here. Like I said, I'm freezing. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for hanging out in the freezing, uh, freezing cold porch with me. I will see you tomorrow. I love you, and I'll see you then. Bye. Love you.